Hey guys, welcome back. This is my second video on compound turbos. So our previous video, we talked about all the different turbos I ran on my compound setup and how they performed. And now we're gonna talk about basically hypothetical stuff, what I think would have worked or what I think I should have done, but things that I didn't actually put on the car and test. <clears throat> so we actually ran four separate turbos, front turbos with my compound turbo setup. We ran the GT28, we ran a GT3076, we killed it, ran a different GT3076, then we changed the manifold, and then lastly we ran this EFR7670. So what we never did was build an awesome compound turbo setup. If I had to judge all four setups, they almost progressively got worse. The, honestly, the most fun setup was the first one with that GT28 turbo. And the reason was it just had so much power uh, coming up in the mid-range. You know, running that turbo up to 20-something pounds of boost at 4,000 and 4,500, this car had a lot of torque. And that was very enjoyable, especially with a manual transmission. So, But the problem with that setup was the back turbo was, with that front turbo, I think was right. <clears throat> and it was actually the back turbo that was wrong. So my back turbo was just too big for a GT28 in the front. So I'm not really sure what turbo would have worked best, but I can give you some feedback on what I what I do what I'm certain on here. I should have had the big turbo up here in the engine bay with the front turbo. Running it in the back, I had to run the exhaust all the way to the back of the car. Well, you know, you're, you're going to do that anyway, right? Well, that was a T6 flange, it had dual inlets. So that ended up running twin pipes into it with a spool valve to help it spool, which barely did anything, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> it spooled faster, but it chokes the flow. So it's like it basically made more boost, but then it didn't go any faster, or not noticeably faster. So that didn't really do anything for my setup. But uh, the big problem with that, like I said, that back turbo was just too large. So I would uh, get rid of the rear mount keep the front keep both turbos in the front if you're going to do a compound setup and i would probably make that second turbo so i the first setup i ran i had about a 47 48 millimeter on the compressor for the small and a 68 for the big so those were 20 mil bigger so 20 millimeters bigger is too big i know that even if that was in the front of the car that would help it spool but there's no way that that's going to account that's going to be enough to fix it um, in the diesel world, I see some guys run 10 millimeters bigger. Maybe that would be a good rule of thumb. I don't know. But, uh, my, my advice would be set your small turbo up to get the mid range response and the spool response you're looking for. And then I would probably set your big turbo up, you know, so like, say you size your, fir your first turbo and you say, okay, I need, you know, this boost response at three, four, 5,000 RPMs. But the problem is that turbo only makes 300 horsepower to the wheels, or 350 or something. Let's say that happens. You say, well, I really want to make more than that. Figure out what that number is and size your second turbo to basically be capable of doing that. Or maybe just a tiny bit more. But don't go insane. So what I did, that GT45 was probably capable of 800 wheel if it was on, you know, like a Chevy motor or something, like a V8. I think those, those things would make like 800 to the wheels. And I was only running at 500 wheels. So basically I had a turbo that was very capable, which to its credit, it never died. So that I mean, that's a, I guess that's a definite pro. It's, it's actually the only turbo that's ever been on this car that hasn't come off broken. Props for that. So it never died, but because it was so oversized and because it was on the back of the car and because it was an eBay turbo and because it was a T6 106 AR, all of that stuff working against it, it spooled horribly bad. This turbo started making boost when most people hit fuel cut. So for most motors, that would never work. What would be a good setup would probably be to have something sized just barely big enough for your top end power goal. That's probably what would work. And what you would hope for is that your front, your small turbo spools, and right as it's hitting full boost, your second turbo is spooling as well. That's what you're going to want. I know that. Uh, from a fun standpoint, I know the physics and thermodynamics and all of that might say one thing, but just from a fun setup, I would push the small turbo as hard as you can. That would, to me, that made the car the most fun. I guess if you had some advanced electronic boost control, maybe you could drive the front turbo really hard for spool 
maybe make it do everything. If you know, say you're running 40 pounds total, then just make your front turbo do 40 pounds at five grand or something. And then as the back turbo comes in, you computers balance it all out for you. I did not have this type of fancy boost control. This is probably, you'd have to have something custom at that point. Uh, so that'd be not likely for anybody. But if you know, theoretically, that would probably be the, I guess the balance of fun and reliability was you'd push the front turbo really hard to get your mid-range, but then as soon as your second one comes on, you back off the first and let the second one take over some of the load so that they're kind of working more equally and let that do your top end. That way you don't kill your small turbo. That's probably what you'd want to do. So, and the other piece of advice I'll give you is if you can afford it, just buy, an, buy a really nice turbo because there's a definite difference I mean, everybody knows that, but there's a pretty good difference between running a, an eBay turbo and, say, this Borg Warner. The, what had set me back in the past, I actually bought this EFR right when they came out, probably within a few months or so. It was very new when I got it. And the huge mistake I made, I put this on as just a regular turbo setup, uh, and, and it spooled horribly bad. It didn't make really full boost to, like, 7,000. And I didn't know why. I could never figure it out. So I just took it off the car and I didn't know what was wrong. I knew something was wrong, but I never could figure out what. My previous turbo setups worked fine. And the turbo setups after that worked fine. So it's kind of weird. And it turns out the mistake I made way back in the day is this little guy right here. <clears throat> I didn't hook that vacuum hose up. So that vacuum hose helps to open the blow valve when you let off the gas, but the boost pressure that pushes on it also keeps it closed under boost. Now, that's probably obvious to most people, but I had my, a different blow-off valve. I had a Tile 50 millimeter, and I just didn't want to use this one, so I left it unhooked, and that was a huge mistake. I should have, you know, took that apart and capped it off or something. I don't know if there's a delete for that, but I didn't know better. I left that hose off, so what was happening to me was it was blowing the blow-off valve open, and that's why it was so hard to make boost. So it's actually impressive it made any boost, now that you think about it. <clears throat> so that was a big setback back then, but yeah. Moving forward, if you can afford it, you know, I recommend getting a good turbo uh, before, you know, because you may be able to find, say, uh, like one of these Borg Warners that, you know, it costs a lot, but there actually is one turbo that can do the job. I think where they make the most sense is probably going to be in the very, very high power ranges when you're looking to run, you know, 50 pounds of boost, 60 pounds of boost, things like that. That's probably where a compound setup can legitimately, you know, beat a single turbo. As far as something, you know, say on the Miata platform, if you just wanted to make 500 wheel, I haven't tested it, but yeah, maybe, maybe you could come up with a cheap setup that would actually perform pretty well. I, I just don't know. I haven't tested that. I, I was not able to do that, but it would be interesting to see. I bet you it would be something like a, if you probably something like a real GT2560, something like that that can make close to 300 wheel or whatever it is, 260, 280, something in that range. <clears throat> and then also another turbo that can barely hit your 500 mark and then, you know, run those compound. Uh, one thing I will say, if you do compound, you'll want to run an intercooler. So my setup, I did not run an intercooler between the two turbos. And the reason I did that was I was thinking that, so I ran the pipes from the back to the front so that, you know, you get a little bit of cooling from that maybe. And uh, it just simplified things. But in practice, that was probably a bad idea. I probably should have had an intercooler between the stages. But again, that's another downside of compounding is packaging constraints. I, did, I didn't run one because it was just a lot simpler to not run one. So, yeah, there's lots of, lots of things to consider. Actually, I should probably do a... I don't know, we'll just put it in here. <clears throat> so one of the problems we had repeatedly with a compound setup was oil pumps. So I used the engine oil to lubricate both turbos. And so the front ones, you know, your standard stuff, the rear one, I ran a feed to the back and then I had a scavenge pump that would pump the oil uh, back to the motor. So actually you can see right here on this valve cover, there's a little fitting that's plugged off right now, but that's where I, uh, the oil pump would pump the oil back into there and it would gravity drain back to the bottom of the motor. This kind of worked but I had issues with it and I had to come up with several different solutions and it, I never had it perfect. And this was definitely a pain point 
in the system, it's probably the biggest problem that I ever had was oil pumps. So at first I was running this like eBay scavenge pump and I think I installed it. I can't remember. But anyway, I ran it and it would overheat and thermally shut itself down. And it would overheat mainly because it was pumping hot motor oil and it would just heat the whole thing up. It didn't get that hot from running, but it got hot from the hot oil that it was pumping. <clears throat> so once I figured out that that's why it was shutting down, I took it apart and disabled the thermal protection so it would run all the time. But it still had issues. So I ended up taking it, uh, throwing that one away, and I went and bought a BMW oil pump that's used for something BMW makes. It's like a diff cooler pump or a manual transmission oil cooler pump, something like that. Real compact. And it actually, that pump worked pretty good, but it has this like O-ring face that was... I had to build a custom... I, didn't, I should have built a custom adapter. I think I drilled and tapped and put fittings in it. <clears throat> so that worked okay, but then... I wasn't just having pump problems. So say you shut the car off, oil would naturally gravity drain into the turbo. So then the turbo would just back up with oil anyway. So then I put a time delay on the uh, pump so that when you turn the key off, the pump would keep running so that, that oil that gravity drains would also get removed and pumped up to the valve cover. <clears throat> However, once that shuts off, the oil that was returning to the valve cover would gravity drain back feed through the pump. Now that was a slow process, but it did happen. So you could park the car, drive it a few hours later, everything was fine, but let it, or say drive it an hour later or 30 minutes later, it'd be fine. But if you let it sit for a few days, that oil would slowly back feed through the pump and then fill the turbo up again. So what I ended up doing was I had to build essentially like a reservoir underneath the turbo. So I just used tubing and kind of ran it back and forth and had like a gravity drain so that there was essentially a small reservoir under the turbo between the pump and the turbo. <clears throat> and this allowed it to have a place for oil to accumulate instead of filling up my turbo and then leaking out of the seals. So once I had all of that, I had a reservoir under the turbo and I had an oil pump with a time delay. With those two things, the problem seemed to be solved. I say seemed to be, because occasionally I still had issues. <clears throat> and at the time, I couldn't figure out what was causing it. This went on for a while, and I, I thought it was something in the design of the system that was causing the problems. And what I finally found out was there was some type of electrical problem to where the pump would just intermittently, just for a second or two, shut off and then turn back on. I don't know if this was a bad relay. I don't know if this was a bad pump. But one day I left the car running for several it probably ran for like six hours. I just left it running. And I finally caught it where I heard the pump just shut off. And then a few seconds later, it turned back on. And I just waited. And sure enough, while it was idling, it finally just shut off for like 45 seconds on its own and then came back on. And then I finally knew. I was like, okay, that intermittent oiling issue I've been having was the pump just turning off. So I didn't know what was causing it. Like I said, it could have just been a relay. It could have been the pump. <clears throat> but for whatever reason, it would just shut off and then turn itself back on without any intervention. So right about that time, uh, the car had sat and I decided to just pull the turbo setup out of the back completely. So yeah, this is, this is some real world experience and advice on the pain points of building a compound turbo setup. So if you're considering building one, hopefully this will help you make your decision. Have a good one.